Okay, so uh, I'll get started now. We've got a few people here. We've got a few slides to get through, so uh, we'll get started and, uh, and see how we get on. If anyone has any questions, then just uh, uh, hit the buttons provided and ask, or I'll ask in the chat, and I'll answer them as we're going along. Okay, so the topic for today's webinar is uh, Oracle. IIS to WebLogic Migration, why and how. So we're going to talk about uh, the reasons that you might want to migrate to, to uh, from Oracle IIS to Oracle WebLogic, and how you might uh, go about that upgrade, the services and the tools that are available to help you with that progress of upgrading. Uh, so first, why upgrade? Uh, obviously, the, the real reason that anyone is going to consider upgrading is uh, money, is cost of support, uh, and uh, probably uh, not maybe for the euros in that picture there, but uh, so the objective is to reduce the cost, and that can either be the cost of development of new projects, in which case you're looking for thing, for the support of new standards in the newer versions of WebLogic than are available in the older versions of IIS. It might be for uh, improved long life support or cheaper long life of the application, in which case you're looking at uh, improving application availability, reducing downtime, reducing outages, improving the reliability of the application, again reducing the amount of outages, uh, improving the manageability of the application, so improving your ability to support the application with less people, with less uh, services, with less uh, equipment, and improving the scalability of the application. So that is uh, improving uh, how uh, how many users you can deal with with uh, uh, your existing kit to so doing more with less basically uh, so those are really the drivers for why uh, you might want to consider an upgrade and they all as I mentioned come down to cost the other big driver is uh, that weblogic is the future of application service from Oracle so Oracle IIS is their, their kind of old guard, old breed application server. Uh, the acquisition of BEA has brought in uh, WebLogic application server, which is a much more modern product, uh, has a much more modern architecture, supports all of the latest and greatest features, has been uh, extended to bring it right into the, uh, the latest decade of application servers with uh, support for things like coherence and uh, technologies like that, so support for the uh, suite, other suite of Oracle products, Oracle Rack, in the better integration with Oracle security products, uh, and that kind of thing. So, so really, uh, Oracle WebLogic is the, the future of the Oracle line of application servers, and Oracle IIS is the past. So if you need to, if you want to continue uh, working with the Oracle product stack, then uh, you need to start thinking about moving to, uh, to Oracle application server. So, uh, there's an article marketing graph here uh, about Fusion Middleware and the growth of the Fusion Middleware as products have been added and uh, new customers have come into the stack. Um, there's a large number of customers of the very big install base of WebLogic out there. There's a lot of information about how to get it working, how to solve problems, best practices. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge available. There's a lot more knowledge available for the WebLogic product stack than there has been or than there is for the uh, IIS product stack. So yet another driver to move forward is the improved support available for the uh, Oracle product stack. Uh, so WebLogic fits into the uh, Fusion middleware suite of products. Uh, there's a nice picture here of the, the various uh, products where they fit in. So JRocket Realtime, uh, the uh, high performance real-time JVM, uh, tools like Oracle Coherence, which are data grid tools for scaling out uh, data, dealing with large data, how do you manage your data problems, how do you get at the data, how do you move your processing to the data, and WebLogic Server providing the business and application processing on top of the data. Uh, those are supported, those product suites are then supported by monitoring and uh, operation tools, Enterprise Manager and the tools around that, and development tools, so J Developer Eclipse and the various development tools around that. And then, uh, along the top here, we've got the various tools that are available to help uh, upgrades of the product set. So, uh, WebLogic Domain Upgrade Tools, Smart Upgrade Tool, the Upgrade Assistant, and the J Developer Application Migration Assistant. 
Uh, we'll talk a bit more about those tools in a few slides time when we come to talk about how we do the migration. So still talking about uh, why upgrading. So uh, but the other reason, one of the other reasons to upgrade is to uh, allow to get onto newer hardware. So the older versions of uh, Oracle Application Server are not supported on new hardware. Uh, if you're going through a hardware refresh or if you want to improve your hardware, you're going to put, need to uh, up-version the JDK, up-version the uh, versions of uh, WebLogic and uh, various other tools that you're using on top of that. So the uh, newer versions of uh, those Linux, Solaris, Red Hat, HP UX, uh, flavors of Linux and IIX, uh, JVM 6 support using either Hotspot or JRocket, and the HP and IBM JDKs as well in both 32 and 64-bit versions. Uh, databases, so the Oracle uh, 10, 11, uh, 1 and 11, 2 versions of the Oracle database. Also, uh, WebLogic supports SQL Server, DB2, Sybase, MySQL, and Darby. Uh, Darby is using the evaluation versions uh, if you want to uh, look at a database other than Oracle. In terms of support for web servers, uh, the web server plugins, the ability to run WebLogic behind a farm of WebLogic servers behind a, a farm of web servers for the web servers providing load balancing, uh, failover, uh, and serving up some of the more static content, then Oracle HTTP Server, uh, iPlanet, uh, Apache, and IIS are the uh, servers that are available, or that the plugins for are available, configuration available. And for more information, uh, the Oracle uh, pages on the, uh, the 11G or 12C uh, Fusion middleware stacks give information on uh, the different supported versions. So, uh, and this is another Oracle marketing slide, really. Uh, the value proposition moving from uh, IIS to WebLogic uh, reduces the operational costs by reducing support fees, reducing hardware maintenance of legacy hardware, reducing outages, uh, improving performance, improving resilience, and again allowing you to do less with more, um, reducing the downtime, increasing capacity, uh, increasing performance, uh, and reducing risk uh, and complexity. So when migrating uh, from an existing IIS uh, 10G server, there are essentially a couple of options. Uh, there's the no-cost option of going to the WebLogic Server Basic Edition, uh, which has uh, a number of features that would enable you to, to do that basic upgrade. And then there's also the cost option of moving to uh, WebLogic Suite 11G, which includes features such as coherence, JRocket real-time, WebLogic operations control, uh, and a lot more of these features that make the, the server work harder and better for the uh, for your money. Uh, so these features are really uh, aimed at getting uh, the very best out of your hardware, the very best out of your systems, uh, and the very best out of your developers and development effort as well. So in terms of support for standards, uh, 11G R1 is J5 compatible. I think uh, 12C is J6 compatible. Supports uh, uh, various J6 standards, so JSS2, JPA2, uh, JAXRS, that's the rest for web services standards, JAXRS 1.1. And these are all uh, technologies which are going to enable you to develop your know, applications cheaper and quicker. So by moving on to a new version of WebLogic, you're getting cheaper uh, application development, so you're saving money there. You're building more supportable systems quicker, so you are able to uh, reduce the total lifetime costs of your applications. So we've mentioned a couple of times high availability and failover and the various features in WebLogic that are going to help you do that. So those include uh, features that enable you to avoid unplanned downtime, which is essentially failures. So things like load balancing and clustering that help mitigate server failures, uh, backup and recovery solutions that help you mitigate data failures, disk replication uh, options for disaster recovery, data center failures. Uh, cluster, uh, clusterware, hardware clustering solutions that help you deal with uh, hardware failures, and then uh, features that enable you to limit the planned downtime. So, uh, online, on by side deployment, uh, maintenance uh, modes for both logic and the databases, and the ability to do rolling upgrades, all allow you to do uh, operations and upgrades and rollouts without needing application downtime. So, you can reduce the amount of downtime that you're application suffers 
and that uh, increases productivity. It means you've got more time with your application up in front of your customers, uh, and so you're going to have uh, less outages, less lost revenue from your sites being down. Uh, one of the other advantages, so the ability essentially WebLogic has always been designed to essentially run anywhere and the zip installer available from the OTN site uh, gives you a, a nice small download that you can just unzip uh, and there's scripts in there to just start up the domain and, and get going. So it's really uh, quick for getting running on uh, platforms, Mac OS X, Windows, Linux uh, and allows you to get up and going quickly. It's also great if you have automated package deployments of environments where you want to just be able to uh, run an installer quickly and uh, extract files and get everything up and running. So that's the why upgrade and kind of the marketing stuff. So the process of upgrading, what tools and uh, what tools and services are available, and how would you go about uh, doing that upgrade and that kind of thing. So. Tools, there's a number of things available. Smart Upgrade tool from Oracle, the Upgrade Assistant from Oracle, and the Oracle J Developer Migration Wizard are all tools that will help you migrate various parts of your applications and depending on the technologies that you've used in your application, some of whether those tools may be applicable. Uh, services, some we'll talk about some of the services that might be helpful around migration and understanding what kind of uh, what kind of migration you're looking at, how complex is it, how much is it going to cost. Uh, what kind of return on that investment are you looking to get? So we can talk a bit about some of the services that we can, uh, or that can be offered there, especially by C2B2 as a Oracle partner in, in doing that. So the upgrade tools, the Fusion Middleware Upgrade Assistant is aimed at allowing you to upgrade uh, a number of their products, so Discover Reports, Forms, Portal, IDM, uh, HTTP server and web cache, uh, enterprise content management and BI, and data integration products, activity monitoring and B2B integration products, all have uh, Fusion Middleware uh, upgrade assistant uh, tools which will help you uh, kind of automatically upgrade from, uh, from one version to another. Uh, J Developer Migration Wizard for Web Center B2 applications and the ADS application. Uh, so in JDeveloper, you can load your application and say, I wish to migrate it to this version, and it will go through and, and do some of that upgrade for you. And then the uh, OC4J custom applications, where you've written your application using the technologies like, uh, well, using any technologies, essentially, that aren't in that list above. So that's things like straight JFPs and EJBs, through to applications that might have Spring or other components in them. So the WebLogic Smart Upgrade tool will, will help you with that, and I'll talk about that in the next slide. So. Smart Upgrade uh, as a tool is used to uh, look at your application, it loads in your application, it goes through what you've got, it looks at your deployment descriptors and tells you how to upgrade your deployment descriptors. It looks at the various uh, libraries and tools that you're using and suggests ways that you might be able to help upgrade or might be able to upgrade some of those. So primarily it's an advisor on how you go about upgrading and converting your application. Uh, and in places it will do automatic uh, upgrades for some, of, some components of those applications. Um, there are still new, uh, all the time there are still things being, ad being added to, uh, to this tool, so it, uh, it gets better and better. Uh, still it is providing uh, advice and so obviously there is a, a bit of a limit on how much it can do for you and again this is where some of the services and things will come in and we're having an assessment and looking at what needs doing is going to be adding value. The other application, so the automated upgrade assistant, which will take the Oracle specific technologies like forms and reports or portal or web center and will automatically upgrade those components due to be uh, the WebLogic uh, equivalent versions. So this tool uh, basically just takes in your application, it spits out uh, an application and, and does most of that upgrade for you. Um, it's a uh, Variable use. I've seen it work well. I've also seen it uh, produce uh, systems that aren't migrated properly. So again, it helps to have uh, some information or to know what you're doing and to use it. Take its output with a pinch of salt. Uh, but it's far better than not having anything available, and it does give you a good starting point in order to to look at how to upgrade your applications. So uh, perils of migration. Uh, this upgrade process is not 
nearly as easy as it sounds, uh, but then not necessarily as hard as it sounds either. So if you think it sounds easy, then uh, you're going to be disappointed, and if you think it sounds really hard, then you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's things that you don't think of that are going to cause you the problems. So uh, behaviors in components, where the default behavior of a component has changed between uh, the old IIS version and the newer WebLogic version, or the library where different uh, behavior, different settings, both in the code behaviors and APIs and standards, but also in default settings for various parameters in the application server and in the portal or the server suite or whichever components you're using. Uh, features becoming unsupported is also something that we found with customers where they're upgrading and there have been features that are no longer supported in the newer version. So yes, they can upgrade their, applica their portal application from an older version to a newer version, but there are some, some features which are no longer available in the newer version and that then requires development effort or uh, alternative solutions to deal with their customer requirements. Another big thing is changes in standards where uh, application standards have moved on, uh, especially if you're using a version that was compatible with draft standards and those standards were then finalized but were actually different. But any changes in application standards we've found quite often will make a difference in the ability to migrate the application from one environment to another. So services uh, from C2B2 around migration, so we've a lot of experience of uh, this we've been working with both IAS application server and the logic application server for a long time. We were working with both before uh, Oracle brought BEA, so we've had uh, a lot of experience in the two applications. Uh, so we have a, a essentially large knowledge base of customers who we have done these migrations for, and so when we come to look at uh, applications, we can take that information and we can look at yours and say, well, this is very similar to what this company did, and therefore an approach based on what they did may be useful. Uh, so we look at, based on our experiences, of, and these are real-world experiences, this isn't just looking at the documentation, this is having large numbers of customers who have been through this pain before, and we know where they had problems, we know where we helped them, we know which bits they rewrote, which bits they just lifted and shifted, and which bits needed a, an approach in between. We also look at the business needs of the organization, so that's more about uh, looking at the cost-benefit analysis of migration, are there applications which are better off? to be rewritten or to be scrapped or that will be replaced by something else. Are there other applications where you do need to move it quickly? So that's looking at the value of the application to your organization and the cost of migrating the application and doing some, or allowing you to do some cost benefit analysis of that. So we look at the applications, we look at the environments as well. So migrating from one version to another is not just about migrating the code in the application. You also have an investment in environments, you've got servers, you've got Oracle IIS servers, you've probably got Oracle HTTP servers in front of those, you've got Oracle databases at the back end, you probably have multiple of all of those things. How does that upgrade move forward? How do you migrate those environments? What about the custom settings that you've got in your different environments? Have you configured HTTP keep alive, socket timeouts, SSL certificate security configurations? Uh, connection pools, data sources, all of that environmental configuration that goes into a, uh, a live production environment, that needs to be migrated across into a new WebLogic environment. So we then look at the environments and look at what's involved in migrating the environments as well. And we categorize the applications essentially into a number of categories. So is this one we can just lift and shift to migrate, or either just take the application as is because it's 100% standards compliance and drop it into the new environment. Uh, is it a complete rewrite so that there's no way that this application is ever going to work on WebLogic because all of the technologies it uses have become unsupported or large percentages of the technologies have become unsupported and no longer work? Or there are serious uh, uh, unpublished APIs that you were using in the previous version that are no longer available, so is there anything that prevents it? Or is it just that the cost of uh, migrating the application is greater than the cost of writing the application from scratch. So there are applications that get rewritten, and then most applications will fall somewhere in between the two. So there may be uh, an amount that needs rewriting, an amount that can be moved, or it may be that uh, the migration tools will do some of the migration for you and you just finish off and clean up, or the migration tools do all of the migration for you. So we then come in and we can categorize your applications into these various uh, types of, of things. From that, we can we have a process where we can uh, work out the the benefit to your uh, organisation and categorise that kind of thing. So we have a process picture here. It's on the C2B2 website if people want to see it in more detail. 
probably a bit small there on screen, so I've zoomed in on a couple of slides. So the inputs to the process are essentially our existing knowledge base of information on application migrations, uh, meeting with the subject matter experts within the organization that's planning on migrating, so talking to their business analysts, their technical architects, and the most important ones is their operation staff, probably, also talking to their developers, getting an understanding of uh, what the application is, how it works, what components it's got, what technologies it's using, what were the reasons for choosing those technologies, uh, are there alternative technologies that could be used, all those kind of questions that we talk to subject matter experts about. We'll also take a look at the code and the configuration. If you have a large number of applications, we take a, a sample of that based on complexity and that type of thing. We're also feeding in documentation. So that's the Oracle product documentation. So there's quite extensive Oracle product documentation on the migration paths available and the various technologies. Uh, there's also uh, design documentation that your organization will have in terms of uh, design documents, deployment do documents, operation guides, support guides, that type of thing. So that gives us excellent information on what's going on. We also look at the non-functional requirements, so what uptime requirements do you have on this system, uh, performance and scalability requirements for your system. We take all of that information uh, and we look at then all of the applications that you've got, all of the environments you've got, and they get catalogued. Then from that catalog, there's two processes that go on. So the first is to look at the application migration, uh, look at each application and categorize it into one of these categories of do we need to rewrite it from scratch, can we just shift it as is, do we need to do something in between the two, and also the infrastructure and the environment. So can this environment, can, are the settings just default settings that are still the defaults in my project? Are they default IIS settings that are not default in my project? So we need to make some changes to the default settings in my project. Are they customized environments? So we need to try and replicate the customized environments in my project. So we produce plans and, and uh, estimates on doing all of these things. And then the output is this migration uh, assessment report and a strategy which discusses how applications are going to be migrated, uh, which applications get migrated first based on business need, complexity, and priorities. So uh, are there quick wins that can be migrated first? Are there applications that are business critical that we need to start migrating first? And also, are there uh, applications that are nice examples of technologies that are being used in other applications? So by migrating one application, can we learn lessons that can be applied to later uh, migrations in order to improve those? Which of the various tools are applicable for this migration? Uh, how much is the uh, which? Yeah, which tools are applicable? What can they do? How much uh, can the tools do for you? And then, how much is it going to cost? What kind of effort are we looking at to do the migration for each component? Uh, what's the cost-benefit analysis of doing those migrations? So these kind of services, this kind of process is what uh, we have found works best for doing application migrations and therefore that's the service that C2V2 offer to our customers and is the approach that we recommend is taken when people are looking at migrating from our Oracle to WebLogist is to get that understanding of what goes into your applications and not just your applications and the code but the environment in order to, to be able to do this migration. So that is basically the end of the uh, the webinar, the, the slides that we've got for today. Uh, I hope there's some useful information in there for some people. Um, we've discussed many of the reasons to upgrade, which really is just one reason, and that's to reduce the whole life cost of running your application. Uh, and that there's lots of services out there, lots of stuff available out there to help. So this includes a combination of tooling from Oracle and services from C2V2 and Oracle and uh, that kind of thing, which will help you get through that migration and identify the best way to uh, to get your applications into a more supportable and more stable future. So that's the end of all of the slides. Uh, has anyone got any questions? I think if you ask them in the chat, I'll hit the question button and I can answer any questions that anyone has. No, no questions, in which case, thanks for listening and uh, watching. And we hope you'll come along to one of our uh, future webinars and uh, learn some interesting